Hello, everyone. As Caitlin mentioned, today we're going to be explaining uh, in, in InfluxDB together with Telegraph Operator and how to use them to monitor Kubernetes workloads. We're going to be showing some examples. A lot of these are based on what's in Telegraph Operator repositories. Maybe we'll start by introducing myself. So uh, my name is Wojciech Kotian. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Influx Data. I am one of the people that contribute to Telegraph Operator from our, from our company. Um, and I'm going to be the one showing it, showing Telegraph Operator today. Cool, so I'll go ahead and introduce myself. So I'm Pat Gon. I'm an engineering manager here at Influx Data. Um, I manage the deployments team um, and we are responsible for all the plumbing that is um, in place, this whole CID, CI CD pipeline um, for getting um, for our cloud to SaaS offering. So um, that's, we'll kind of focus our talk in the space that we know, <laughs> which is um, Kubernetes and um, Influx Data. So first I just really wanna say, so Influx Data, is the remote first company behind InfluxDB. So I think you, most of you are all know probably more than I do <laughs> about how to use our product, but um, I'll give a little bit of an overview and don't hesitate to ask questions um, along the way and we'll get to them at the end. So, it's a, so InfluxDB is the platform for building time series applications. Um, and oh, I wrote all these really good words and now I'm having to read them. And really at the heart of it, it's an open source, um, time series data. So it's purpose optimized for time series data, whether that is sensors or like, um, I have one of those like doorbells where you can see see the person. So it's like, um, there's time data there. So wherever there's um, time-based data, Influx DB is, is a uh, perfect uh, platform for you to de develop Applica applications around that data. So you can start from the UI or you can skip right to it and you can use the raw code and the APIs. And we've got um, we've got APIs and client libraries in, in several um, of the most popular programming languages. So Telegraph, if you're not already familiar with Telegraph, if you have say that um, ring device over there and you wanna get your data somewhere, Telegraph has the input and output plugins to allow you to, you know, get your data from your device into um, a database. Of course, my preference is if you put that into InfluxDB, but we've got um, plugins for other other types of things. It's a, um, it's an open source agent, um, and it's it, it I think has a really uh, healthy uh, open source community, and it's maintained by InfluxDB, um, um, and they have like. They have a lot of different plugins. <laughs> There's over 300 different plugins that allow you to basically, like I said, like manipulate your data on the way in, um, get your data in and help you manipulate your data on the way out. It's really a really powerful tool. So today we're gonna focus on talking about it in this space of Kubernetes. But um, I know that there were uh, several talks, I think at, Influx Days North America, where they actually talked about Telegraph. I think there was a beginner session and I think some other things. So check it out because it's a really powerful tool. So now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the Telegraph operator. And I wrote some notes um, ahead of time to prepare for this. So the Telegraph operator packages the operational aspects for deploying a Telegraph agent on Kubernetes. So this is about having a, a um, Kubernetes sidecar with a telegraph operator there. Um, it's, it's, um, it's a sidecar container based on annotations and it provides the telegraph configuration to, to scrape the exposed metrics all defined declaratively. Um, it allows you to do define common output destinations for all your metrics. So you can send it to InfluxDB or you can also um, send it elsewhere. And I'm going to pause there because I want to let Wojciech finish setting the stage for his demo. <laughs> and I don't want to take it all. So actually Wojciech's going to take it from here and, and, uh, and uh, do a demo. So, but I'll let you also finish. Right. So uh, thank you, thank you, Pat. So uh, as you've mentioned, Telegraph operator is meant to be running alongside, alongside Kubernetes workloads. And this is what we're going to focus on today. 
let me could could you stop sharing so i could start sharing on my end yes but i have to wait check first i had to show this slide okay right. done done now i can <laughs> stop sharing <laughs> okay yes so I, I noticed that there is a question about apis for InfluxDB. so i'll just share this real brief and brief and keep it open so we have a documentation about all of the apis there are also clients and i'll show it in a bit so it's well documented. These are REST, REST APIs. There is a querying language called Flux and InfluxQL that could be used to get the data. And writing the data is relatively simple. Well, going back to Telegraph operator, uh, what I'm going to do is I have a checked out copy of the source code of Telegraph operator. And it includes a lot of ways to run it in using kind. Kind is Kubernetes in Docker, which is a way to run a whole Kubernetes cluster locally just using Docker. And that's what we use for a lot of testing of Telegraph operator because it is a simple way to run things and also be able to do fancy things like building a custom build, a custom build of the container image with Telegraph operator and say loading it, which is not something we will be doing today, but it's also really useful in development. And we'll just use the exact same setup that we use when we develop it. There is a, so what I did in advance, because it takes around one, two minutes, I run a kind start, make a kind start command, which basically just creates a kind cluster on my, on my computer. And it, it deploys a few things, but we're going to deploy um, so if we're going to deploy InfluxDB version two because that's what we want to demo. So I just deployed it. This is the open source version of it. And as soon as it, let me just port forward to it. Okay. Mm, so let me see what's happening in my kind cluster. Okay, so my InfluxDB version two is running right now. So I can do this. So right now I just, I have, I created a fresh Kubernetes cluster on my machine. I deployed InfluxDB version two to it, the open source version. And I'm just going to bootstrap our cluster, meaning that this is the same if I would deploy it locally, but I just want to have everything in my cluster. And I'll just make it larger. So when I first deploy it, I'm going to set up an organization and everything for the influx DB itself, because this is where we want to get the metrics in. And also touching on the question of how to get the data in. We also have a UI that shows a way how to write data from a lot of places. So say if you're a Golang developer, it'll give you a ready to use snippets. Obviously you would want to replace the token and some other things with flags over time and parameterize this. But this is a really good way to get started with just putting data in Influx. But anyway, right now what I really want to do is in order to be able to write to my organization, I need this token. So right now we're just going to grab this and then we can get back to explaining and configuring Telegraph operator. So I haven't deployed the operator yet because there's one additional thing I want to do. So Telegraph operator has a concept of classes, which are classes of applications or classes of metrics that we're gathering. And this basically maps to specific sets of Telegraph configurations. And one of the things that we should be setting in here is how would my application write the data to wherever I want this? Because Telegraph operator is meant to be generic, so we should be pointing it at specific outputs, which is part of standard telegraph configuration. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tell it, okay, let's just, let's just also write it to my InfluxDB v2. And now um, what I'm telling it is in my cluster, there is an InfluxDB2 service, which is what we were just talking to in the browser in the InfluxDB2 namespace and the port it listens on is 8086, which is the default port. I'm just going to tell it my organization is demo as I just entered it, bucket is demo. And now I'm just going to copy my token and because it's in my local machine, I'm fine sharing it because I'll just read the class later on. I will also copy it to 
possible if we will be using the default one as well. So I'll just put this. Um, so right now I'm configuring the classes, meaning that when we, when we want to monitor some workloads, we will need to specify what the class of that workflow is, or it will be using the default class if it's not specified. So if I've created app, default, and I believe infra, I think we will not be using all of them, but, but all of them also specify that the data should be going to the new InfluxDB V2 that I've just created. This the is a standard. Check, you're yes. missing your equal sign. Oh, on thank token. You so much. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. That would be. It, and it bothered. Be a painful it demo. didn't just bother me. It bothered someone else too. <laughs> I was watching it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for noticing it. So right now I'm going to go back to my terminal and I'm just going to deploy it. This examples classes. Okay. So the example is already committed and the example shows how to use it with Influx DBV1 because from development perspective, we, we keep on using the version one for that, which is something we should improve, but it's just, it's just telegraph operator has been created when the V1 was the, was the, was the most recent one. So right now I deployed my class, my configuration. I can update it in the future and there is live preload, so I can change it, but right now we deploy that. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to deploy a uh, telegraph operator and it can be deployed in multiple ways. We have the dev.yaml file, which basically is meant to be used for local development, but because I'm doing this in kind, I'm just going to use, reuse it because it also has hard-coded certificates. So it's not really production ready, but it's enough to work in kind. We also have a Helm chart. Um, uh, okay, so, uh, right. Now it's in, it's on GitHub. Okay, telegraph operator. Mm, chart. Yes, this is what I was looking for. Sorry for that. So we have a telegraph operator Helm chart as well. That's that's available if you just install our, our influx data Helm chart source and then and then you can install it or just use upgrade install, which will either install it or upgrade it depending on whether it's already installed or not. And this is also this is a this is a preferred way to get to, to getting production environments running, but because we're using kind and because the, all of the examples are based on, on this, I'm just going to follow this and not not to the hand chart based installation. But I can right now I can just go and see what's running in my cluster. So you can see that telegraph operator is running. It's ready to handle uh, to handle the uh, new deployments coming in and, and adding the telegraph sidecars. So now the way telegraph operator works is, and maybe I'll just open one of the deployments to explain it. This is just a definition, a very simple definition of how to run Redis. It is a stat stateful set, but it doesn't really even include volumes. In real life, this would be a more complex stateful set. But this is an example of how to use telegraph operator uh, to, to monitor things. The way telegraph operator works is it for each pod that gets created, it checks the annotations. And if there is a telegraph operator annotation in it, it will inject the sidecar. So right now we can see there is just a one container called Redis that's just using the default Redis image. But we can also see that we have the annotation telling telegraph operator that it should be contacting local host and the standard Redis port and using the Redis plugin. This is, this is one of the plugins that Pat mentioned. And maybe I'll explain this a bit more. So actually, so Wojciech, before you go into that, I was hoping, because I don't think we actually showed people the repo. <laughs> oh, that's a really good point. So, yes. <laughs> like, operator. This is all, this is all code you guys can get to. We yes, kind of got into operator the details. Yeah. It's open source and and it also includes a, an extensive readme on how to get started with development, with deploying points to the Helm chart. And this is, so if you want to rerun what, what I'm showing today, I think the easiest way is to clone it. And I'm basically using a lot of the make target and just applying some of the things that we also mentioned in the documentation, because you can see that we're deploying this, we're just deploying this through GitHub URLs rather than locally. 
but yes, the, the, the repository is is on GitHub. It is open source. You can you can clone it. You can run the same. Yeah, and you're working today. within it right now. I just realized we didn't like. <laughs> no, that, that that but thank you so much for this. That is a very good point <laughs> because I am I am because I am so into the repository. I sometimes forget to explain things that may be like maybe my day to day things, but for a lot of people they may be new, so it's good to mention it. So going back to the configurations, I may have skipped explaining some of these things. So the way Telegraph operator works, it, it combines the output, the Telegraph configuration that the Telegraph will be reading from multiple sources. One of the sources is the classes that I mentioned, which is just a vanilla Kubernetes secret with the definitions of all the classes. And usually this would be including outputs or some of the tags or some of, some of the general things that would be applied to all the metrics related to this, let's call this, this class of applications that we want to be monitoring. So in this case, we added the output to it, which, which means that everything with the app uh, class would be writing to our InfluxDB v2. We also make it output to standard out so it's easier to debug. And we have it use global tag that will show in a while in the UI. Basically, type is set to app and then host name and node name would be the name of the host and the node that the telegraph is running on. And now if we take a look at the Redis deployment, we are adding some other pieces of telegraph configuration. So one of this is we're adding inputs.redis, which means use the Redis input plugin. And previously we were using the InfluxDB v2 output plugin. So we're telling telegraph, talk to Redis on this, on this port, get some of its standard metrics and send them out to InfluxDB v2 on this specific URL. We could also tell it, like, send it to my cloud instance, send it to some of the on-prem instance of InfluxDB, or maybe send it to one of the very, very large set of output plugins that we support. Like, I know we could be sending it directly to Kafka or some, or some other output plugin that we support or write it to a file. But basically we tell it, this is the input. These are the outputs that, I get, that are in the secret in the classes and then they get concatenated. So my Redis definition tells, this is how you should gather metrics for my Redis. My classes tell it, this is where you should be writing this. And it also tells it, by the way, this is the app class, meaning that whatever I put in my app class in the classes definition is where the data goes. It, we can also specify uh, settings for memory requests and limits for the Telegraph sidecar. This one is invalid and it will be ignored. This is more of a development test case, but the limit, the CPU limit, will be will be will be set to the on the Telegraph sidecar. So anyway, that's that. And let's just let's just go ahead and deploy this. So this was uh, examples ready, I believe. Yes, examples ready. Okay. So now if we go back to watch. We can see that we only specified one container, one container for, for, for the pod for within the pod spec. We can see it's actually running two containers. If we do this click pod, if we go ahead and describe it, uh, let me just do it this way, we'll see that there is the Redis container we defined. There's also the telegraph container that was injected by the telegraph operator. And we can see that the CPU limit is set to, one, to 750 millis, so 0 0.75 of a single CPU core. We can see it's mounting Etsy Telegraph using, and we, know, we can see it below, using a secret that was generated by Telegraph operator. So basically, when the pod was about to be created, Telegraph operator combined the whole Telegraph configuration, put it in that secret, and started running Telegraph operator. And it also tells, told Telegraph operator that it should be monitoring that configuration to allow hot reloading, which I'll explain in a bit, because that is a, an interesting feature of Telegraph operator. But anyway, at that point, I, I believe the pods are already running. So what we could also do is, right now I'm just telling, uh, I'm asking, well, actually, let's use something more visual. We're going to run a tool called K9S, which is a nice uh, console-based UI for a lot of things Kubernetes related. 
and it's much better than what I was doing before that. So I think that's going to be more visible now. So this is my pod with the sidecar included. I can take a look at the logs of this Telegraph sidecar and I can see that because we told it to also log, log all the metrics to standard out, we can see that we already have the metrics in here and the metrics are in line protocol, which is what InfluxDB builds all on top of. But this is basically just because we told Telegraph to write the standard output and we didn't tell it to use any other protocol. So it's just writing it in line protocol. But going back to, to this, we can see it running. So now I can go back to my InfluxDB and I can see that I have a lot of my Redis data. So I could see, uh, actually I don't even know what to look at, but let's say max clients. And I see, 10K that my max client is configured to 10K. Uh, I could probably also see a lot of other matches, but because there's not really nothing happening, I can also just have it show all the metrics. So we see some metrics changed over time, um, but not a lot of them. So we, we can see that there, is, there are a lot of metrics that there. Are. I can also show the raw data and you can see that there's a lot of data that we have. Um, and we can see that the telegraph operator is reporting this. So let's say, okay, let's try to do something more practical. I, I would want to monitor how much memory is being used. So I already have it. And for any other workload that's, that I will be deploying in my cluster, telegraph operator will, will automatically be injecting that. But we can also see that the tab type is set to up. And this uh, right now, in fact, the BUI works in this way that I'm right now, I can build out a query using just the UI. And I can filter by all of the tags that, that we are setting and the type equals app was set when we were creating the Redis deployment. So I can, with this, I can, what would only be, so let's say, let's go back, let's remove this a bit. I could say that I will start by just filtering data coming from my applications. And then I can go back and say, okay, and now, Let's take a look at all the fields they have, right? So we, for example, we have another, another thing that we could deploy, which is, which is an example of, of, of deploying Nginx. In this case, it's also an interesting example because previously with Redis, we, had, we were specifying the raw telegraph configuration, but, we could also, but if the application is already exposing metrics in the, in the Prometheus format, so if you have a, so if if you if your application already exposes metrics using the Prometheus standard, you can say, go scrape Prometheus matrix on these ports or on one port. I could just say just scrape port eighty eighty, and then this is the path to go to scrape it every five seconds, and the protocol is HTTP, and the last annotation we have here is also scrape the internal, uh, get the internal telegraph metrics. So once I deploy that, apply F examples, email set, this will deploy, uh, this will deploy the Nginx daemon. You can see it's being deployed. We can see it's slowly running. And if I go to the logs, right, it's mentioning that it can't really scrape the logs because Nginx is not listening on those ports and also our Nginx is not running any application that will expose the metrics. But we can see because we also enable the internal metrics, we can see some basic metrics that the Telegraph is reporting. So right now, if we go back, um, if we go back, right, we can see the internal data in here, we can see gather errors, you can see a lot of other data in, in here that's slowly being gathered. And based on that, we, we should be able to build a lot, of, a lot of dashboards out. So let me just let me just show a quick example of that. Well, this is, this is not exactly what, this is not exactly telegraph for, uh, operator specific, but let's just show how I could basically just go and say, okay, I just want to see I used memory for Redis, right? And then I can just save it and I have my dashboard. And this, that would be an easy way to just 
move from having my workload in the cluster to basically being able to visualize it in InfluxDB. So, and we can see that the method, if I go back to the Telegraph plugin, uh, to the, sort of to the logs of the Telegraph, we can see the data keeps on coming in. So one other thing that I wanted to mention or show is, just really interesting is, as I mentioned, we also support reloading of configuration. So I could just start adding a new tag. Let's say new type equals application. And for the other one, we can say default, new default, okay. So once I deploy this, uh, classes. So the only thing I'm deploying right now is I am changing a secret that Telegraph operator is using. But if we take a look at the logs, and this should take around one minute for Telegraph operator to notice this, and we want logs from all the time. In around one minute, because this is how much it takes for Kubernetes to, re 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 to, to reload the secret mounted inside the container. Um, in around one minute, Telegraph operator will pick it up and will say, okay, I note, I see that the, con that the configuration has changed. So it's going to reload it, but it's also going to check what are the Telegraph sidecars that I've created? What are the secrets they've created? And go in and update them as well. And we should start seeing the, the new data in a few minutes. This is this is really useful, and this is something we use a lot at Influx Data, and we started using the pod reload as well recently. And that was one of the things we really, really, really wanted. Because whenever any configuration changes, we don't really want to restart the whole workload or try to manually restart the telegraph operators. What we would really want is, and, and we have it right now, is the ability that once we change the settings. Telegraph operator is, would be smart enough to detect that uh, and then decide which are the things that really need to be updated. So we can see that uh, it decided that it, we don't really need to update the secret for the Nginx. We can see that it decided, let's not update the secret for Nginx daemon mnhx2 because nothing changed in there because we didn't change the basic class. But let's update the secret for Redis because the class in there was up. So if I go back, and this is a mistake I've made, if I go back and also add this class and then tags um, basic, basic app. If I do that, then we should see, then around one minute, we should see, okay, I miss, we should see it reload again. And then in a while, we should let's take a look at all the logs. We should see another log message saying that's updated. But right now I can go back. And if I try to filter on what we called it type, what we called it one second. Um, okay. Called it type, yes. So maybe the change wasn't yet it wasn't reloaded yet on the redis level we should take a look at that in a bit but so Wojciech, just to summarize what you're doing you're basically you're now like kind of you've got the telegraph operator and your local kind cluster and now you're you're adding more and more things for it to monitor and report right Correct. so i so i think I just we, thought I'd I, summarize. Well, right so maybe that's a good point so i'll try to summarize what what's what i've been doing and what's happening what i'm trying to show right now uh, so we deployed, we had a Kubernetes cluster that did not have any workloads in it, which, which would often be the case, or why maybe we would have some workloads. And then what, what we did is we deployed Telegraph operator, which would start injecting the Telegraph sidecards to any pods that were, any new pods that were created. So for any new workloads or any workloads that would have the new annotations added, the Telegraph sidecars would be injected to those. And because changing the annotations on the pod would create a, would have would mean that the pod gets recreated. So whenever we will be adding the, the annotations, then then the new pods will get created and they would start getting the telegraph sidecars included. One other thing that I tried to show, and maybe I should have done a better job explaining these things is. So that would be the day one of operations. You would deploy Telegraph operator, you would 
add annotations to your workload and you would start seeing the data inside your influx db or any other or any other place where you would be loading the data to but as you move into day two of operations sometimes you need to change some of the settings and this is an important aspect of this or sometimes you need to let's say rotate the, your, your tokens which i assume would not be manual it would be some automated process but that would be something that should be happening so let's say you generate a new token you have an automated process go and update it in the in the classes definitions and then after a while let's say after 24 hours you would delete the old token and expect everybody to be using the new token if the hot reload would not be in place this means that all of the workloads would have to be restarted or at least the telegraph sidecars would have to be restarted with the hot reload functionality in place telegraph operator and then the telegraph sidecar would take care of this automatically and the day two operations are much easier with the with, with this hot reload functionality being available. The hot reload fun you now you Wojciech, you added the hot reload functionality. What like was that like two or three months ago? Or maybe it's a little bit longer now. It was definitely this year. I don't really, really remember when exactly. <laughs> it's all but a that, blur. But that that came that was exactly what happened as part of our internal use cases. So yeah. this was a this was a pain point for a lot of things we're doing internally. Which is that in in some cases we just want to change some settings or we just want to so for example we want to change the frequency at which we get some of the data because we want to increase or decrease the amount of data we're storing or we we or we want to move some of the data to other places like we may be monitoring some data in our internal systems but we also want to be moving some of the data to to like production systems because we want these to be to be in the same place that our customers use it so we can also use that for uh, for yeah, monitoring it was it was a huge thing because you'd go and you'd like an engineer would change like you said the frequency and then the next question would be like they'd go and look and they're like it's not it hasn't changed <laughs> what's going on so having that hot reload like adding that that functionality which was added earlier this year Fantastic, because and also I wanted to say, as you mentioned, we're using this in house. So um, yeah, it was definitely kind of a frustration point when people would make a change and then they'd look for the change and it would take a little bit to, you know, it basically it would have to wait. I'm gonna say void check until it naturally <laughs> like got restarted, which is kind mm -hmm. of a, a funny use of the word naturally, but let's just ignore that. But, right. Um, because whenever the, the actual application code changes, then we, it will still restart and see the changes. But the thing is, then it could be between a day and a week, depending on how often the code changes. And with this, this is a matter of minutes. And but like you said, like this was a big thing for us. And and this is a huge, huge change, huge improvement for us. So going back to to the dashboard and uh, and the data we have in here. So right now, if I reload this, uh, right now I can see the new type. So the field I added, and I did not go and restart anything. So this is like the this is the thing we talked about. It's difficult to to show it because it takes a few minutes for for all the Kubernetes mechanics to kick in and and change the underlying secrets and then this triggering the underlying uh, watch mechanism to to notice this. But in the Kubernetes reality, waiting a few minutes for these change to get deployed to like hundreds or thousands of telegraph sidecars is, 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 is very acceptable as opposed to the thing we mentioned, which being it would be a matter of days or weeks before this data is visible. So right now I can go in here and see my internal metrics as well. So this is so this is a huge improvement, and this is this is. I think a really nice feature of Telegraph Operator. Um, and like I said, we could, we could, for example, one other thing I would want to show, because if we were to see the logs of, say, Redis and the, the operator here, we would not be able to find the, the message that the logs were restarted, because we keep seeing this, this data flowing in. But if I were to, say, remove the output file, and deploy that and then wait a few minutes while we perhaps do something else. I'll also see that now I no longer will see my 
uh, my data being write, written to standard L, which is which is also a pretty interesting feature. Why would so, someone use that so, feature, Wojciech? What would they use that one for? Uh, I mean, so I think the standard out is more like a debugging tool. So the reason mm -hmm. why we include it is we include it when people develop because then you don't have to go to. Uh, okay, so, so the data is so, still going where it's it's still right, going. Right, right. Okay. Yes. So I mean, one of the nice things about Telegraph is we is we can put it in multiple outputs, right? So we have Telegraph operator has extensive document. It's Telegraph itself has mm, it has pretty good documentation of, I wanted the documentation, yes. So we have a lot of different types of plugins and they have a good documentation. So basically for outputs, I could be writing it to a ton of things. We were just using a file. Okay, so let's just, we were just using the file and InfluxDB. So we were just using this plugin and then we can see it's readme file and we were also using the InfluxDB v2 you were using v1 but that's kind of was interesting but basically we could configure a lot of things and like i said it has outputs we could be filtering things at the output level as you mentioned it's pretty powerful to be able to do that we could be configuring a lot of things i think the nice thing of telegraph itself is that if it can't write to one of the what's oh, we wanted outputs not inputs um, if we, if for some reason it can try or can read or something that isn't really working at the, at the time, it's going to retry it and it's going to buffer the data and it's also going to be smart about how much data it can buffer before it throws away all the data and all of that is configurable, which is a really nice thing as well because we were toggling inputs and outputs and Telegraph would, would just be automatically disabling the ones it has. But technically I would be able to disable one of the outputs and let's say if it wasn't able to write to another output it would be smart enough to realize this is the same output i'm just going to keep on raising the same buffer so we could and we, i mean we just we just did change the configuration we can see that right now it was just it just reloaded and it stopped yeah, writing outputs. Yeah. Okay. it just stopped writing outputs but the nice thing is like we can do all of these and like i said in, in kubernetes world where sometimes we don't want to restart, like, I don't know, we have deployments where we have or deployment stateful sets and then other types of workloads, but we have workloads for a single type of a microservice will have, would have hundreds of pods and then restarting all of them just because we want to tweak a single setting isn't that great. Whereas here we could just apply a small change, reload it and the whole system will just pick it up. And none of the things we started like Telegraph itself the sidecar was not even restarted, it was just entirely within Telegraph. So we spend a lot of time inside the company across teams to get all of this working. And I think, I think in general, Telegraph is a really nice tool to monitor Kubernetes because like I, I've shown that we support, like it's really simple to support both just using Prometheus metrics and scraping them and they end up going into Kubernetes, which is what we use a lot ourselves internally because a lot of languages just make it natural to expose the metrics in this format. So it's really neat that we, we could just specify the port of ports, the path, and telegraph will be and telegraph operator will just generate configs out of that. But also if you know that you're running something that telegraph knows how to scrape, then you can just use one of the many, many, many plugins and you just inject this small snippet and telegraph operator will glue it together with, with where it should be output to. And you can also have some additional settings in the, in the, in the classes. So it is really easy to manage. And from our experience, when we have large clusters, we have dozens and dozens of those clusters we have to manage. It is really useful to be able to do that. One of the community contributed features that I think we'll be showing in the next release that's happening really soon. And I'm really excited about is ability to also reference other config maps or a sequence and uh, be able to uh, be able to reference some of the metadata. So if I would want to get some of the Kubernetes metadata, I can expose it as an environment variable in the in the annotation, I believe the annotation is something like and field ref 
And I can say that this domain variable name is like namespace name. And it will just be metadata that namespace. And like I said, this is. Wait, so what is the of, new feature that's coming, Wojciech? Ability to reference various things. So in this case, I'm referencing a Kubernetes field, meaning that this will that this will tell my pod what the namespace is or the name of the pod is. So this would be like pod name. I could also expose that. This is useful in some cases but we really want to tie this back to some of the fields, but I could also get the like the IP address of the pod, which I could then use to filter things. But I could also do something like secret key ref and like token. And I could say for my secret, which would be my token secret dot, this would be the key name dot, let's say token, right? So with that, I could, I could, for example, well, this could be the wrong example, but let's say token equals token. With that, I could have my token managed by a secret. I could reference that and then telegraph up, and then Kubernetes would load this as, as an environment variable for the telegraph sidecar and I could use it in the configuration. So I wouldn't have to inject it in other places. So this is useful if, for example, we're using other tools to manage the secrets or the secrets are just managed by our application because then the telegraph sidecar would, would get it. This is this is not where hot reload would work because of the way it's it's working because of the Kubernetes internals. Maybe that's something we, we could extend in the future, but this is still a pretty nice piece of functionality because if for multiple reasons we have some data in some other secrets and we just want to reference it, it's much easier than, than having to hard code it in the annotation. And you said this was a community. This is a community contribution that's like kind of in review and will be part of the next release of the Telegraph app. Well, well, I'm, yes, I'm really hoping it will be, and uh, I'm really excited about that because every time we get contribution to Telegraph, Telegraph operator, and I think that's that's open source. I think that's that's a really, really nice cool. sign that that, that yeah. people are using the tool and that people are willing to spend their time extending it. So we're trying our best to help whenever anybody contributes in any way. Even if someone just opens an issue, like we've had people open an issue that if they run it, they then we forgot to create the namespace and we were fixing those kinds of things. And that, that's also great because this means someone took the time to, to give it a try. And if something was broken, they also let us know so we could fix it for other people. That's really cool. And Wojciech, did you have anything more you wanted to to uh, show, to share today? Or I, I think we're coming. No, I, I yeah, think I that's... Think we're, Caitlin, I think we're... We're finishing up with our part of the show. I mean, awesome. the, the well, you webinar. guys aren't done yet. <laughs> We're not done yet. Well, thank you uh, for that boy check. I, I know live demos are always fun. Um, so I, I know boy check, you already sort of answered this, um, but how does a newbie get his or her arms around APIs? I know you showed the document the docs link, is there anything else that uh, a community member can do to get some help or? I think going to InfluxDB, so first thing is just getting onboarded in InfluxDB. I think the easiest option is to go to cloudinfluxdata.com and play with the SaaS offering because it's, uh, there's a free tier that provides most, oh, sorry. Uh, okay, I guess my typing was, um, so basically, uh, now they're going to see where I got my picture from. <laughs> Quickly. So basically, just just sign up for InfluxDB Cloud, which is the easiest way to do this, or just run the open source version, wherever you want. Like I, I just run it in my Kubernetes cluster. There is a container that you could just run. There, there are binary that you can just grab and run it on. Like there's multiple ways to run InfluxDB, and then when you go to the UI, there's a way to get started with most languages. We also provide ways to get Telegraph configurations. But that is a slightly longer process, but basically um, this is a way, there are multiple ways to get the data. You can also write, you can also directly use the API, but I think we, we, we try to do our best to just get people started with whatever it is that they need to do, right? So I could just say, just on my system data and that it's going to basically, okay going to basically generate a whole config for me. And this is just a telegraph configuration I can save. 
I can run Telegraph on my machine and it can start writing data to FinchSDB. Well, and I would like to, so let me tell you what I do to go figure out anything on InfluxDB. I go and find blog posts from the fabulous Anna East. So like she has one, it's like TLDR InfluxDB tech tips, creating buckets with the InfluxDB API. Like I am completely biased, but I think her blog posts are fantastic for a newbie. And then I think they're also really good for someone who is um, not a newbie. So I would, I would go look for some of those InfluxDB tech tech tips where I think she talks through using the API to do different, how to use the API to do some different things. And I think one other thing we're mentioning is Influx CLI. It's a great tool to do a lot of things. So anything from creating buckets to writing data, reading data, and is possible via the CLI. There's also a way to export, import both data and objects of things like dashboards. So it's a really powerful tool and it's also easy to get, get set up. Awesome. So that's way. Um, I think also you already answered this, but can you share this data locally or can you share this code for us to test it locally? I'm assuming it's all in the repo. Yep, I think that's where you yes. go to that readme for that. For that and, repo. Make, and actually and that question inspired me to say, oh yeah, we forgot to point you at the repo. <laughs> <laughs> and the make file is also a good starting point because it provides an easy to use make targets like the kind start, deploys in FlexDB1, deploys a lot of things, make kind test basically deploys most things. And it's even deploying Redis and showing you at the end that Redis has the site that has the site container. That sleep is going away. I just need to merge a PR. Just didn't have the time to do it today. That's going to be a proper cube cuddle wait. So we will wait for the operator and not just assume 20 seconds is enough. But there, there, is a lot, there are a lot of make targets that just make it super easy to start. And you touched on this briefly, but uh, how, are we, how is Influx Data using the Telegraph operator internally? It sounds like it sort of was developed from an internal pain point as well. So it was, it, it was developed, I think, for both internal and external uses. But, but when, it, when, we, when we started deploying workloads and we were thinking about being able to handle large set of uh, Kubernetes clusters and war, large workloads, we were just discussing how to do this, how to get all the data. And given that we already had Telegraph as, uh, as a very successful and long uh, and project with long history, we wanted to use Telegraph and we were just wondering how to do that. And Telegraph operator was just a natural way of doing this. So we use it, we use it a lot for most of our workloads, meaning that we, one of the first things we deploy in our clusters is Telegraph operator, which is obviously automated, but that's one of the first things we deploy. And then from all the workloads we monitor, we just add the same annotations I've shown. They, they may be slightly more complex than the examples we're showing, but it's still annotations that we use. And for a lot of the code we write internally, we just expose them as Prometheus metrics or expose them in other ways. So it all depends on what we're monitoring, but we're trying to use the native input plugins, the, 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 the Telegraph native input plugins that for, so for things like Redis, we would just be having those plugins get the data from Redis internally. For things that expose metrics, we get them as Prometheus metrics. It, it really depends on the use case, but most of the things we deploy just has the annotations and, and Telegraph gets deployed in route automatically. And, you know, just kind of curious, what for both of you, this is a, I have a question that I have for both of you. What are you guys working on in the next six months that you're really excited about that you know, the community will like or get excited about as well? That is a good question. So I, I know that we, I mean, I think this should, we should also go back to the, to the, to the, to the, to why we're using this sidecar containers as opposed to demon sets. Uh, because we do get this question a lot and I, I'm, I'm actually surprised this question hasn't come up. So uh, uh, one, we deploy Telegraph as a sidecar and this means that if we have lots of workloads, then there is a lot of Telegraph sidecar containers and there are a lot of processes that 
could be stalled by a daemon set. And uh, so we chose to use the sidecars because we noticed that a telegraph per pod has a, is more successful at getting the data and not being able to buffer it if things ever go wrong temporarily. So it's much more reliable if we monitor a single pod, but we're also trying to figure out ways to, um, to do something between manage between running telegraph sidecar for each pod and running it as a daemon set, monitoring all the all the nodes, sorry, all the pods in a specific node. So I, I just to explain briefly, a daemon set is something where there is a one pod for each Kubernetes node, so for each dedicated VM or per metal machine, depending on where the Kubernetes is running. And we're trying to figure out if there is a way to also handle workloads that don't really get a lot of metrics without injecting the telegraph as, as each individual, as, as a cycle to each individual pod. And I think that is an exciting challenge because maybe there could be some compromise, like something's being monitored as demon sets and something's being monitored as sidecars, but we don't really have a good answer to that yet. So we're trying to, trying to tackle this because that's one of the things that could be helpful for, for us internally as well. And I'm sure a lot of people have this issue that a daemon set, so one per all the pods is too much data to gather. And then a sidecar for every single pod is too many resources being used for sometimes really small microservices that don't get, don't get involved a lot. And what about you, Pat? What else? I mean, you're nodding along, so you clearly agree, but yeah. anything else? <laughs> In terms of like from the perspective of the telegraph operator, I think Foychek, I think Foychek covered it. But just generally, in general, we're just going to continue to make InfluxDB, our cloud to SaaS product, scream and fast, and make it. My team is going, art is working to continue to make it so that our developers can deliver sweet, sweet software to the users more quickly. So that's what I'm always excited about. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you both. Um, I, I feel like there's going to be lots of people checking out this webinar and they might come bug you in the community Slack with follow-up questions.